This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Have you ever had a problem so hard you thought it was just impossible? <sighs> the chocolate fudge brownie or the Nutella cheesecake? Well, luckily, computer scientists have come up with a method for dealing with these. It turns out the unlikely answer is to relax. The story starts with the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Before he was president, he was a prairie lawyer. This was a lawyer who would travel from town to town arguing cases. This meant he often needed to ride hundreds of miles every week. He was a busy man and wanted to do this the most efficient way possible, covering the least distance and not passing by any town twice. So a natural question arose. What was the shortest route he could take while making sure that all the towns were visited? This is now known as the traveling salesman problem, and it's one of the most famous unsolved problems in computer science. So what makes it so hard? I mean, you could just write a computer program to crank out every single route possible and get it to return the shortest one. As they say in France, et viola. But the thing is, this is kind of the computational equivalent to throwing a deck of cards until they land in the right order. It's going to take a serious amount of time. A county with around 50 towns would take longer than the age of the universe. As time wears on, more and more computer scientists are starting to think we'll never have an answer to the traveling salesman problem. So does that mean we should just give up and keep traveling longer routes than what we need to? Like peasants? Nay! Computer scientists have come up with a technique that makes seemingly impossible problems possible. The key is to relax. Seriously, that's the technical name. There are books called An Introduction to Relaxation Techniques and Discrete Relaxation Methods. I feel sorry for the highly strong person who accidentally orders one of these things and is expecting pages of palm trees and cocktails and opens it to pages of this. Relaxation is the process of loosening some of the constraints of your problem, then trying to solve it. Once you've made some headway, add the constraints back. So in the traveling salesman problem, a way to relax would be to let Lincoln visit the same town twice and not make his backtracking footsteps count toward the distance of the route. It's the same thing as finding the fewest miles of road needed to connect every town to at least one other town. This is called a minimum spanning tree. And for a computer to solve one of these takes pretty much no time at all. Okay, that's cool, but does it actually help us with our real world problem? I mean, it's all well and good to solve it in fantasy land, but how much does it actually help Lincoln? Well, obviously it doesn't help him now because, you know, he's dead. While it's not the perfect solution we were going for, it's still pretty useful. For one, we know that the minimum spanning tree can never be longer than the shortest route that Lincoln can take. It's the shortest distance between towns and doesn't count the backtracking. So any real world solution that includes backtracking or takes a different route will either be as long or longer than this. So we've at least found the lower bound to the real solution. If we calculate a minimum spanning tree for Lincoln Circuit to be 100 kilometers, we'll know for sure that the shortest route Lincoln can take will be no less than that. Then if we find a route that's 105 kilometers, we'll know that we're at least within 5% of the shortest route. So we can get a pretty good estimate of the real answer without ever knowing what it is. If you're willing to forego perfect and accept good enough, seemingly impossible problems become a hell of a lot easier. That's actually pretty good advice for life. Dear diary, Jade, you're not perfect, but you're good enough. Approaches like these have allowed one of the hardest traveling salesman problems, the shortest route around the earth while stopping at every city, to be solved within 0.05% of the real solution. Computer scientists can actually calculate how good good enough is, and usually it's a pretty sweet deal. Often an answer that's at least half as good takes around a quadrillionth of the time. Not too bad when time is of the essence, you know, like when you're trapped in a burning building. Well, that got dark fast. City planners try to place fire stations so that all houses in the area can be reached within about five minutes. Obviously, fire stations are a costly business, so we want the minimum amount of locations possible. This, like the traveling salesman problem, still remains unsolved to this day. The main issue is that we need a whole number for the solution. A fire department can have one fire truck in the garage, or two, or three, but not two and a half, or pie of them. This constraint of whole numbers is what makes this problem hairy. 
But if we relax this whole whole number thing, there are many solutions that exist. This is a special kind of relaxation called continuous relaxation because we're idealizing our whole number world into that of the continuous world where any fraction or decimal can be a solution. Solutions to this relaxed problem could give us answers like there should be half a fire truck over there or two thirds a fire truck over here. But what happens when we transport ourselves back to the real world? We can't really build half a fire truck. Well, we can, but that really raises more problems than it solves. We could choose to round the answer to the nearest whole number. For example, one and two thirds of a fire truck could be rounded to two fire trucks, or we could treat it as a probability. If you get an answer of half a truck, just flip a coin. Heads means truck and tails means no truck. This method gives an answer at least half as good as what the real solution would be. Relaxation isn't a magical tool that solves impossible problems, but it gives pretty good alternatives in a fraction of the time. It just goes to show that even the most impossible problems, the chocolate fudge brownie or the Nutella cheesecake, become manageable if we can just learn to relax. You know what? I'll have both. There's no one there. Computer science and algorithms play a huge role in our day-to-day -day lives. They can help with things like when to try a new restaurant or even how to find love. I recently learnt a great lesson from an algorithm about when to think less. If you're interested in learning more about computer science, Brilliant.org has three great courses on the foundations of computer science. Computer Science Fundamentals, Computer Science Algorithms, where you'll find some of the things we discussed today, like the minimum spanning tree and artificial neural networks. Often when I'm learning through a textbook, I zone out without realizing it and find myself at the end of the page having to read it all over again. Brilliant.org is an interactive learning website, and I think my favorite thing about it are the engaging questions you're presented with to move on to the next part of the quiz. This lets you know you really understood the material and keeps you focused and on track. The first 200 people to sign up to Brilliant using this link will receive a 20% discount. Just go to brilliant.org slash up and atom. Link is on screen and in the description. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video can help you relax if you tend to stress out. This video was based on a chapter of this book, Algorithms to Live By by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. It's an excellent read. I would 11 out of 10 recommend. If you liked this video, I've made some other videos about algorithms that will improve your life, which I've collected for you and linked at the end in a playlist. So until next time, bye.